Well, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development has recommended that Israel remove government subsidies for yeshiva students. In an annual report, the global organization criticizing Israel in several ways, including its economic policy toward ultra, the ultra-Orthodox community. It comes in an effort to close what it said are wide socioeconomic gaps within the society. The report also suggests boosting funding in Arab communities for things like child care and school school systems. This year, the government approved a state budget of $3.7 billion worth of coalition funds for the ultra-Orthodox. Take a listen. How did the people of Israel with thousands of years of exile endure the whole world with holocausts and with the troubles with the enormous difficulties and come to the land of Israel? It was thanks to the Torah scholars. The Gentile does not understand this. Why did they say that? Because they were told Israel was involved in it. Someone made sure he did that. Someone from here. I want to bring in our panel now, Rabbi David Fine, a Knesset member in the Religious Zionism Party, and Professor Yossi Shane, a former Israeli parliament member in the Israel Beit Anu Party. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. I just got a promotion. Candidate, not not Candidate. Never. Yeah. Candidate, thank you. It's, <laughs> it's great to have you with us. Uh, I'll start with you. You just heard from one lawmaker saying that the yeshiva students uh, from Gaffney saying that the Yeshiva students are some of the reasons that people were able to really come to Israel. However, the coalition allocating a record number of funds to yeshiva students, but the criticism here is that these individuals are not contributing to society <coughs> and that they're only studying their religion. They're not able to really get jobs or enter into a normal societal function. So how do you respond to that? Well, it's all a matter of how you define contributing to society. For many, many years, from the very beginning of the state, including David Ben-Gurion and the other people around him, valued uh, Torah study. And um, Torah study has been something that the Jewish people have valued, even people who are not involved in it, for thousands of years. And many believe it's what's carried the Jewish people forward, other things as well. But uh, it's a value, and a society is allowed to say uh, that we have a value and we want to pay for it. We want to invest in doing it. It's, not, uh, it's, it's, it's something that's critically important to the present and the future and certainly the past of the Jewish people. Professor Yossi, a lot of people would argue that it's actually a burden on the society to have to continue to fund these religious institutions and students when these people are not working and contributing in their tax bracket for that money to go back to the government for them to receive funding. So talk to us about that a little bit. Look, we are in the age of criminality in the Israeli government. When Ben-Gurion envisioned supporting Torah studies, we had 400 students studying. Now we have 170,000. Not only that, they do not study, they sit in the yeshivas for life, they get subsidies, and they do not serve in the army, and do not pay taxes, and the burden is immense. It's not the, we don't need the OECD. I was sitting in the government and the, for, and the ministry of, 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 uh, 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 um, of the treasury. What we see is robbing the coffer of the state. What we have right now is the state is crumbling. We have 30% of first graders are going to be ultra-Orthodox. If they don't study math and mathematics and, and, and computer science and English, they cannot be part of the workforce. The idea that this can continue in Israel is untenable. I was a member of all the bodies in the world to study it, and I can tell you, we are in the verge of really bringing Israel into a collapse because this society, which is so large, can be really, uh, 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 I would say, part and parcel of the Israeli society. But by so doing and dissociating itself from the society, we are reaching a point of a crumbling society. I'd say criminality is a very extreme language. All of the governments, uh, both the last government and all the ones before that, have also given m much, m much money to this uh, Torah study uh, project. Um, and to say that uh, they don't study, uh, that's a very large uh, overgeneralization. There are some, a very small minority of, of people that are not studying or not studying enough. And yes, th those, there are problems, as with any large system, and those problems have to be dealt with. But to say to overgeneralization, and sweeping generalizations like that, I simply think, are not true. Well, I, I want to ask you, hold on. Based on the 
the remark you're making right. about some people aren't studying. Let's talk about oversight for a little. So Finance Minister Besa de Smeltrich actually froze funds that were supposed to go to Arab societies for schooling, for childcare, for a lot of other things under the condition that an oversight program be introduced. Now, do you suggest the same type of oversight program be introduced for these yeshiva students who are receiving billions of dollars? Sure. I have no problem with uh, people that are receiving money. I run an, an organization that receives money from a duff, bunch of different places, including the government, and we have to be, there's oversight. So yeah, sure, I have no problem with making sure that people that receive money for doing something are actually doing what they need to but do. But do you think that oversight will be well received within those yeshiva students themselves who perhaps aren't really doing what they're supposed to be doing uh, with those Again, I, I think it's, I, I'm very well aware of what's going on in these yeshiva. Uh, many of them are Haredi, most of them are Haredi, but there's a great number. Um, uh, overlap between you know the religious Zionist world and the Haredi world, and uh, I think to say that m many of them or most of them are not doing what they're supposed to be doing is is a fallacy. I think there are some, uh, but um, I'm all for. I don't know if it will be well, well received, but I think uh, I think it's necessary. Professor Shane, your thoughts? Look, I didn't use the word criminal uh, criminality uh, by by random. I've studied it, and I didn't use it in a political sense. It's a clear case. It's a clear case. We have studied, we see there is no oversight. We have seen how money is being spent in order to sustain certain systems which are criminal. I'm saying it and I'm ready to testify what is here. I've seen it in the Knesset, as a member of Knesset. What I mean by that, when there is no oversight, when members of the, of the Treasury are, are warning us for life, are warning us already for 20 years are warning us, but now, this year, it increased by two-fold, double. It was doubled. It was doubled on the, uh, over the education in the Mamlakhti, which is the regular school system, and it was doubled in the sense that we cannot really direct these people to the workforce. We had a discussion with the Rebbe from Bells. We had a discussion. We said, let's study the, we don't, continue to study the Torah, but let's also study what we call core studies, math, English and computer science. He agreed. We even gave 6,000 shekels for each student. The first thing that the government did was nullifying it because there is an interest to the activists in the religious ultra-Orthodox parties that this will continue in order to sustain the very poor and also in order to really hold control over them rather than sending them into the workforce. This is untenable. And the way it is not oversight, this is the criminality. I would just say that um, the OECD putting out a report like this uh, makes total sense, right? The OECD is doing their job. They don't understand uh, the sort of, we've always been, they're very rational and they go by numbers and categories, right? We don't, we don't go by that. We go by a, a higher belief. And he, like I said before, many of the people that don't, are not necessarily observant and, and don't practice a Torah, study, a Torah study, they still believe it in, in, in it themselves and want, most people I believe in this society and, and the Jewish uh, people want that to continue. Yes, there must, there needs to be oversight. It needs to be improved the system. But I think that had we gone by rationality uh, and by all the categories and by all the statistics being right, uh, we would have we would have never even started this country. And I don't think we'd be here today. So, I, will, right. I will just say it's a very critical. If we wouldn't have been rational. Right. And when the ultra orthodox never served in the military, we would have never created this, 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 this country. This country was created despite the fact that for the ultra orthodox, it was upstaging the Messiah. We have to understand, for them, the very creation of the state was antithetical to their own theology. That's why they were anti Zionists. When I speak to Gafni, to Eichler, to Pintus in the Knesset, they tell me the state of Israel is not our mission. Our mission is the study of the Torah against the entire notion of Zionism and modernity, which brought the creation of the state of Israel. Now they're trying to turn everything over. This is why we live on the, uh, on the edge of calamity. And this is criminality plus calamity brings you disaster. All right, Rabbi, I want to ask you, so are you suggesting that rationale and quantitative data is not as important as a belief in a higher power when it comes to contributing in a society and tax dollars that other people pay in this right. country no, who think, their sectors right. are not getting as much right. funding. Right. No, I think rationale and quanti quali quantification is very, very important. I'm just saying that that's not necessarily the only thing in every single example, right? First of all, I'm all for people that pay taxes and all different kinds of people in the society getting what is coming to them. Uh, but 
Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think it's a mistake to say that at various times in Jewish history in the state in the especially since the founding of the state that uh, we have uh, you know measured things by other by other manners as well. So I think that we have to understand that the Torah and the study of the Torah, yes, I believe, uh, is uh, beyond uh, some of these notions, and um, and it always has been. And many people have think that that, in addition to many other things, going to the army and paying our taxes and working hard, has guaranteed uh, the continued uh, survival of the Jewish people. Professor, I want to ask you, when it comes to funding for the Arab sector, the Arab society that does need those funds when it comes to things like education, when it comes to things like more policing because of the crime wave we've been seeing, the government is actually stopping that funding. And this body, the OECD, is suggesting that they stop the funding to the yeshiva students and allocate a lot of that money to the Arab sector where they feel it belongs. What kind of impact would those funds have on the Arab sector? We're now moving to a different story, which is the Arab Israelis. Arab Israelis have excelled in many ways. I just come from one of the hospitals here. 27% of the, of the personnel, including doctors and nurses, and all, the, all the, the, the personnel are Arabs. At the same time, we see that there are still antiquated habits in the society, and there are very, very acute issues pertaining also to the violence, which is now lead, really uh, reaching the highest we have ever seen, with almost 200 people murdered because there is no law enforcement, and there is no cultural enforcement on, against violence. The Arab society is, has to be integrated into Israeli society, has to get the funding. At the same time, it has to undergo a tremendous transformation from within, which will allow people to go to schools, women to go into the workforce. In, in the ultra-Orthodox community, women are working, men are not working. 80% of ultra-Orthodox women are burdening and shouldering the families. In the Arab society, the women are not working because of traditions also. We have to change such habits. The, society, the state has responsibility to, to give money, to channel money, to create the Arab citizens as loyal citizens, as very, very effectual citizens. And if you ask me, in the long run, Arab citizens should also serve in the Israeli army. They are part and parcel of Israel, accept Israel, be loyal to Israel, and that's the legacy of the state of Israel, integration. Integration for the Arabs and integration for the ultra-Orthodox is the only way to continue because these are the communities that grow the fastest. We have, for example, a 74-year-old man, an ultra-Orthodox man, will have on average 58 offsprings. A 74-year non-ultra-Orthodox will have only 11 at best. These are major shifts in society, demographic shifts, that if we don't start to work with them and to engage them in society, I am not against Torah studies. On the contrary, go study. As, as the Maimonides said, said, you can study, but you can work. It right. never worked. It, it, it doesn't have to be contradiction. Right. Rabbi, we've got about 30 seconds left. Your final thoughts. I would just say that you cannot uh, legislate social change. Uh, it doesn't work. It never has. It hasn't worked in our own country over the last several years since there's been a lot of efforts in trying to change the, the army situation with the uh, Haredim. And uh, everyone who really knows what's going on knows that there are a lot more Haredim going into the army now. And these things are and, and working and doing things that are best for themselves and their family. This is something that is not going to happen tomorrow and it's not going to happen in two weeks. It's going to take time and it's happening. We should just, yes, we should help it go along, but radical social change is not going to happen right. quickly. Rabbi David Fine and Professor Yossi Shane, thank, thank you. you both so much for a very interesting debate. Thank, thank you. you.